Well, good morning. Hey, I'm uh, I'm off site today. I'm about 40 miles from from my house or my ranch, and uh, I'm visiting some friends. They they wanted me to come out and look at their pond and I guess measure it because they were going to put the damn it uh, pond sealer in it. And I'm like, well, they they called said, hey, how many buckets do I need? And I'm like, hey, let me come out here and take a look. And uh, I walked the whole property, and it was such a great walk and such a I felt like an educational walk. I figured I'd film this, so I came back about a week later. Anyway, they've got basically three things. They've got two ponds, one being this one, one being more of a natural pond that's in a seasonal creek flow, and then they've got the seasonal creek flow. So as I was walking in, I saw some things that, that they might want to do, so I figured I'll kind of make a consultation video, and I'm pretty super, super excited about it. But uh, this is going to be part one of three parts. Um, this this one I would call the boring one, but the other two I think are going to be a little bit more exciting because we're looking at more of a natural environment. But let's uh, let's start at this pond here. Um, what I found when I walked over here, and you can see I think if you look along the edge you'll see a debris line there. So we had half an inch of rain in the last 24 hours, and it looks like it came up to that point and then fell down after that so it's falling fast and the first thing I noticed when I'm looking at this and I always talk about you know when, when you're in a geographical location you can color code the clay and this is for sure clay I mean this this looks very similar to my uh, mound pond as far as the color but as I walked when I was here a week ago before the rains when everything was dry you could actually see seepage coming out of the dam so I'm thinking about okay what's what's happening here so at this point you're you're taking a guess and my guess is this has clay but it's the, the difference between my place and this although it's color-coded the same it's got way more rocks than mine and going out of memory like uh you know Zach Weiss who is the he's the guru as far as I'm concerned as far as pond building and natural pond building and water retention he told me uh, you need at least 40 percent clay so two things may be happening we may not have that 40 percent clay it may be more like 20 percent I mean honestly this may be 50 percent or 80 percent rocks but you do have the clay in it but what I saw was at the edge here and see how everything's kind of a rusty color when everything was dry it was all white but right along here it was wet and you could, and everything else was dry so we definitely have seepage, seepage coming out here so either the clay content is not there percentage wise or when the people built the pond and I don't know how many years ago they built it uh, maybe they didn't compact it and when I'm walking on it I'm not feeling any compaction on it at all. It seems kind of spongy. So it may be the clay content was too low and we didn't they didn't get the proper compaction or even try to compact it as they were building it. And compaction is so key, I can't even express that. So anyway, I measured this and this is a uh, you know, we're when I measured this, I figured they're going to need 12 pails of damn it. And when I measured my new pond, it takes three. So we're gonna say this is four times bigger than my new pond. This is a pretty good sized pond. Anyway, a situation like this, I think that is the solution is to uh, do it. Um, I would focus, well, I, I guess a third point that, that could be causing it is you know, the deeper you dig the pond, you're digging through different layers of, of soil, and it's possible that they dug through that clay layer and got into something else, so it's draining out the bottom. I mean, it's hard to tell. The way to figure it out would be to, uh, you know, put sticks on the side. You know, during the dry season, if you, if you start putting sticks here, you know, every day, every couple of days, and follow the water down, and if it keeps going down until there's no more water, that means it's not sealed at all it's not sealed anywhere if you find out that it goes down two feet and then it stabilizes then yeah you you, you know you're 
your leak is above that water line. And, and like I said, we know it's coming out the side. We don't know if it's going out the bottom, but it's going to be, it, it, it would take that observation to realize that. But yeah, anyway, in this one, you know, I would definitely use the dammit or, or the two part polymer, but I wanted to go, let's go a little bit further than that. And I wanted to look at the water coming in. And one thing you got to look at, and uh, yeah, as you look on the horizon, you know, the other pond is, is down on the bottom over here. So always look at the uh, roof catchment area of a pond. I mean, think about a rain, a rain uh, barrel at your house on the roof. You know, you got that roof area filling that rain barrel. The ponds are kind of the same way, but it's land. And this, this particular pond has very little roof area. As we're coming up here, the road's right up here, and then it starts dropping down on the other side. Just over here, it starts dropping down that way. So literally, just this area we see, which is here, is the the roof area, the catchment area of the water coming in. And you can see standing water right over here, which is from that rain. Anyway, so you don't have a lot of roof area, so you need to, need to get this thing sealed to hold it. I mean, I was happy looking at it. I was happy with the dam height all the way around. It, it, we seem pretty consistent. I don't see any evidence that it ever overflowed. Um, and once, well, you know, once it does, you know, that's, uh, I didn't notice this before. There is no overflow area. I mean, this, this area here where it's, where it's flowing in is also gonna be where it flows out. And let me, let me reposition here. Okay, so I repositioned to kind of give a better view of the, uh, the catchment area. They came back at some point and put this berm here. So that was actually good because they're, they're increasing their, their roof area. Anyway, so the water is going to come down, hit this berm, and flow into the pond. And that's pretty cool. But what they don't have is an overflow because the same berm is blocking the overflow. And the overflow, you know, the overflow is going to be right here. And, and I think you can see what I'm talking about. There's the, there's not an increased dam height. But the funny thing is, I don't see any evidence that's, that it has ever overflowed. And, you know, we do get big rain events. I mean, we can get 12 inches of rain in a week. But I think it would be kind of catastrophic if it did overflow. I mean, it could overflow anywhere. So I think, following the berm, but this is the berm here. So anyways, to, to go past that berm, let me turn around here. So to go past that berm, and I hope you can see it right here, it's just got this little area, but it's gotta go uphill before it falls down. So I honestly think, it's going back up into the water flow area. If, if it overflows, it's gonna go uphill first, and then it's gonna to have to shoot around either, either that way or this way. So assuming the dammit pond sealer goes in, we're gonna to have to cut an overflow. I mean, that's just absolutely critical. And I think, I think we're gonna to have to do it right here on the other side of this berm. So we're gonna to have to cut it through here but then take it out far enough where it's not going to cut. And that's one thing we'll see on, a, on the other pond here. We, they do have erosion on their pond. We'll see it in the, in the next part of this series. But so we're going to have to cut it down, start going down here, pulling away, away from the dam. Anyway, so that, that'd be the two immediate things the two immediate things I would do, put the pond sealer in and then cut this overflow. And I sure hope the uh, picture is showing what I'm talking about. So those are the two things I would call immediate and then let's go to next level stuff, the, the big dream stuff. I'm gonna, let me walk down and reposition. Okay, so I'm on the downhill side and this thing takes a pretty, pretty good drop. I'm gonna spin around real slowly and give you some some better context into this so as i come around i'm gonna call it a ravine or a seasonal creek right here 
And then as we pan off to the right, you can see the what I'm going to call the natural pond. It's something they built, but it's in the, the main artery of the water flow. Um, so we're not too far away from it. So what I'm seeing from down here, I mean, my head is about to the bottom of the dam, and I'm, I'm a good six feet tall. So we're probably 12 feet below the top of the dam. I can see right here, this was the original ravine right here. I can, I can see a, a ravine here. So this is this was in a, in a water flow, just not a big water flow. And then we just, like I said, we have almost a, a cliff here. But, you know, we get to next level stuff after this, and this is where, you know, you have those beautiful artwork pieces that you see people like uh, Zach Weiss or Seth Holter do. But uh, past getting it fixed, if you want to go further past that point and just really, really start looking at a, a water retention landscape, I would have some other ponds, you know, have this pond drain out into another pond, and we have these cliff walls here and we have like I said the ravine here but maybe with this cliff wall here you know you have a another pond through here and then let it overflow and just maybe do another one and just have a series of them until you get down to that water flow um, the bad part is from their house we're going on the downhill side you know one of the things about ponds is the beauty and the aesthetics of it and uh, from down here, it would look, I mean, from the right angle, it would look beautiful if you had the view of all of them. But, uh, and I don't even know if that's a consideration for the, for the landowners here. But anyway, that could look pretty cool. And I'm going to, uh, I guess I'm going to right now throw in a picture of, of one of Zach Weiss ponds where it kind of shows the effect on what, what I'm looking at. And that'll, that'll help with the land, landowners. Okay, so uh, I mean that pretty much covers the uh, phase one. I'm going to reposition, get ready for uh, phase two, and we're just going to walk down this uh, ravine here as we go down to the natural pond. But that'll be on uh, part two of this. So y'all have a great day.